today is a big day because today is when my brother Steve does the annual bird count and his territory this year is Granville, Massachusetts' Sodom Mountain, one of the two mountains that may have the lost cemeteries on them. He'll be doing this bird count for 24 hours. You can see he's got his binox. I have my binox, but I am not a birder. I'm just posing for the purpose of the video. But Steve is a birder that brings people all over the United States on birding expeditions. And by nature, I learn from Steve. He's a naturalist more than a birder. He says he's into birds because they're the easiest wild critter that's available for study. You can find them everywhere. And so you go out looking for birds and that gets you in contact with mammals or reptiles or insects or amphibians, even fish. So he's out here counting and let's check out what he's got there. He's got... Well, we just started. This is a clipboard of all birds that are most likely. I already have a write-in. Write-in is a, is a bird that a um, Carolina wren? Yeah, I just wrote over here. This is Granville, Massachusetts. Yeah, they're not they're not here, but they're expanding their range. So wow. Um, you just never know. So, so he's listening and then he makes a visual ID? Oh I don't have to, as long as I can identify him right here, but I do both. It's just a song sparrow here that I didn't hear because it wasn't calling. This is an IDA count, which okay. means it's a nesting count. It's um, an important bird area count, and so this is an uh, important bird area. This this area was shot a mountain. This, meanwhile, the world rolls on, and Granville is known to have a constabulary that keeps you on the speed limit, and will, if you're poking around, make sure you're on the up and up. So he already told me that he's been nabbed by the Granville Constabulary. Well, not nabbed, but they... Well, I haven't, but other people have in, like, the spring count. Because they're all over in the spring count. Oh, I love it. Hey, look at that. There's a sign right there by the 30-mile-an-hour speed. Is, is that duck? Duck crossing, yeah. Bird so cross. I thought I said bird cross. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even thinking ducks. I was thinking birds. I'm all fired up about these birds. Uh, you hear that? Yeah, what was that? That's a, that was a yellow warbler. A yellow warbler has been sighted. We got some beautiful trees here, too. You got a lot of scrub maple, but you got some beautiful. There's a big oak. Is that a pen oak? Honeysuckle. I think that's a pen that's oak. A pen oak. Honeysuckle, right honeysuckle. Yeah, there's another honeysuckle right here. We know our share, naturally, you know. There's a cherry. I gotta be quiet. What do we got here? Nice flow right there. Beautiful. I probably see a trout rising, and I wish I had my fly pole. There's a white oak over there. I'll probably get this bird in for you. What? The shallow water? I'll probably get in for you. Do you think we can see it? Well, maybe. It's right here. We'll just check the other side for ducks. Ah, I just saw a fish come up. I gotta come down here with the fly rod one of these days. Yes. Oh, got some chubs coming up there. Probably, possibly a trout down there. I've caught brookies in this brook before, but down further. Oh, what do we got? I think it was a Phoebe. His wife Rachel showed me what a Phoebe was a, about a year ago. I didn't even know a Phoebe. There he is. There he is. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what it is. It's a Phoebe. The ID is made. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody's in that tree. He's fishing. Hey, 
I remember when he learned how to fish. The birds are coming closer. They are very inquisitive when you fish. Right there in the tree. It's hopping around. What is it? It's a red eye vireo. A red eye vireo. ID made. There's more coming. I didn't know it was going to be this kind of a show. Another red eye video. Another red eye video. There's another bird up to the left. There's another red eye. That's the fourth, that's the fourth red eye. Four red eye video. There's a lot of these videos around here. He's causing a fight. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like two birds fighting. He's good at it. Look at all the, look at all the birds that he just brought over here. With his fishing. You can try it at home. We'll have him do a demonstration in a minute. There's another one. They're coming from all over the place. And there's fish rising down there. He's making a count. He's got... He's got it's like golfing. <laughs> Shh, don't you'll scare him. You just got four or five? How many did you get? Four? Four red four, four, four. It's like a, that's like a birdie. A golf course. You just brought in four red eyes. There's a lot of birds around. I can hear them making all kinds of racket. That's what birds do, Sam. They make racket. So what? Tell us about this pistol. Um. So, so, so pissing is a way to attract birds. We're not really sure why. There's a couple theories. The, the most um, accepted theory is that they are uh, um, that it mimics a, um, some other birds' distress calls, and so birds are curious, and they also try to. Chase away predators. Ah, so they would come in to mob a bird so they're of prey. They're going to come in and mob, yeah. Even if it was a different species of bird, would they mob a bird of prey to help? Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll gang up. Wow, so, that's cool. Um, Who knew? Uh, I've done a lot of different kind of experiments. In, um, Seth Kellogg, who I mentioned, tell, told me once the most important thing was to be loud. And I think that that's true, but I found that equally, almost equally important is try to conceal yourself if you can, because they'll come closer and closer. I've, I've been in, um, I've been in a mountain world and did that, and I, yeah, in the I winter, did, I, yeah. I had them within two or three, I had four or five species in two or three feet of me. Cool. So, birds at this time are very territorial. So, me counting here, and then going up the road, a hundred feet, nah, probably a little more, hundred yards, stopping and counting. I'm not going to be counting the same birds. Now, if there's a bird that's close, I shouldn't be. Um, What's that guy doing? It was a Phoebe. It was a fly Phoebe catcher. was attacking a fly right under yeah. our feet. This is the annual bird count that takes place in it's, western it's, uh, Massachusetts. This is the IBA um, bird count. It is a nesting bird count. Nesting. So you have a Christmas bird counts. You have migration counts, which happened three weeks ago, and now you have this. Oh, oh, that was a trout right there. Yep. I'm counting fish. He's counting birds. <laughs> As the, right up there, Stan. What Top, of the tree. Top of the tree, there's there's like a whole bunch of them. You have two, two cedar waxers. Cedar, oh, four, four, all cedar four of them. The cedar wax wing, which are up at the top of that dead tree right there. Those are cool birds. Cedar waxwing sighted here in Granville. Uh, you usually hear birds, this bird you usually hear way before you see them. But you gotta know what they sound like. There he, there's, there's two left in the tree right there. There's two at the very top of that tree. And I hope you can see them. They're a really pretty bird, actually. Yeah, look them up. Look up cedar waxwing. Oh, there's one in this tree right here. And there's another one. There's two there. That's the two that flew off. Oh, look at them. I don't know if you can see them. Actually, cool bird. These are like uh, these are like the otters of the bird world. 
around here. They play with food. They they'll, do. They'll, they'll, they don't nest until later in the year. And like, like they'll start nesting in about a month or so, uh, a couple of weeks. They, they will take food and toss it to each other. Really? Yeah, they'll take um, like cherries and throw them off and catch them and throw oh, them Oh, they will steal them. They're going to steal my cherries and probably my peaches, No, no, no. They're talking about choke cherries and things. Well, they'll take my regular cherries. They like smaller stuff. They like smaller them home. <laughs> I don't know. It looked like criminals to me. Yeah, well, uh, they do have that black mask. <laughs> Again, we're in Granville. Where everyone's a criminal, the local PD <laughs> is extremely <laughs> vigilant. So my brother bought this Jeep because it's got one of them holes in the top for his burden. He can pop his head right out and see what's going on. Or ride with his head out of the Jeep by sitting on a couple of pillows. So he's got a full 360. So he says that a Jeep is the perfect birding vehicles. This is great. He's not going to get stuck because he's got four-wheel drive. He's got great viewing. He can look up into the trees. That's cool from here. As a birder, you're like yeah, looking up. I can look up and I can see one of them cedar wax. We saw a catalpa tree right here. Yeah. Keep mm -hmm. your eyes up. Uh, one, of the, one of the bean trees. Yeah, it's a beaner. They, uh, they make big beans, catalpa beans. Yeah. And they're a thing, good thing to keep our eye on because uh, I would imagine different birds like different trees to nest in, no? Uh, yeah, it, um, some are very specific, but oh, they, oh, there's, not so there's a bird over there doing wheelies. <laughs> yeah. So he's keeping notes right now because it is the bird count. There's a cardinal. I bet you cardinals are dime a dozens on bird counts. The kids at our high school are amazed at his ability to make crazy <laughs> bird calls. So we basically drove around Granville's Sodom Mountain for a couple hours with our eyes peeled. So up above us here is Sodom Mountain. And Sodom Mountain has on it one of those lost, maybe both of those, lost Revolutionary War cemeteries. Either Sodom Mountain or Bad Luck Mountain. So if you happen to live somewhere and you see some weird types walking around with a clipboard, with a clipboard and binoculars, don't call the cops on them. They're just doing a bird count. Somebody driving a Jeep Mojave with their head sticking out. I'm over and say hi. Yes. What bird you see? Yeah, he's got a lot of species. Now the there's a bird on the wire right there. He's very thorough. He sees the bird on the wire. I, I didn't even pay attention. He's looking at areas where he knows birds are going to be roosting or nesting. Hey, that's interesting. There's some uh, lightning rods on that barn. You don't see that all the time anymore. There's an idea that Ben Franklin had and it made him millions of dollars. Hey, look at this. We had poison ivy back there, and this is young jewelweed. Jewelweed is what we use to protect ourselves from poison ivy. It's very, you can see I, as I broke it up, it's got a lot of juice on it, and it neutralizes poison ivy. So if I walk through poison ivy, and I think I might have been exposed, I would take jewelweed, and I would rub it on the area of exposure, and it's a good thing to do. So we're on the bird count now. We're out in front of this overgrowing field. And you know I've been talking a lot about field regrowth and forest regrowth in my videos. And interestingly, when you look at this, it's probably been, what, five, six years since this has been mowed or hayed. And you can see all kinds of good stuff out here. Of course, we got pokeweed growing. There's the pokeweed, and we got our great invasive bittersweet all over it. There's poison ivy aplenty and creeping blackberries. And then you can see trees out here, though. Trees looking like cherry trees and maybe a couple of maples in the distance. And then wild roses. This is quickly reverting. And seeds will get into these clumps of bushes, and we'll have trees popping up. We got some sumac over here on the edge, which is pretty common. But you can see the field in the distance hasn't been um, abandoned. It's still being hayed. 
and so we're looking at grass but this is overgrowing relatively quickly and in a few more years you're going to have a, a thicket of small trees based on the mast years i would imagine we're going to see a lot of maples out here and as i can see over there cherries and we're on the bird count and uh, my brother has noticed several bluebirds we haven't gotten close enough to take any pictures of the bluebirds but Steve, bluebirds are a field bird, correct? Yeah, I, I've had seven of them, and they're cavity nesters. So if you have a field, um, especially with short grass and tall grass, they like they like both, but they like to feed in short grass. If you have cavity net, a, a cavities, that's perfect habitat. If you don't have the cavities, they're not going to nest. What's the cavities mean? So you can get a, a, a birdhouse specifically for bluebirds, because there are some birds that will kick bluebirds out. So if you get cavity, a, a, a bird box just for bluebirds, and there's a certain diameter, I'm not sure what the diameter is, you'll attract bluebirds. Uh, but you want to put it adjacent to a field. You don't want to put it in But even like little, graveyards. Um, right. Um, cemeteries. Yeah, they're like areas. those, yeah. Perfect, because but, that's a field. But the problem is, there's no places for them to nest. So here in Granville, we're under the slopes of the second peak of Sada Mountain up above. You can see the white pines rearing their heads above the rest of the canopy. And it's interesting because we're looking at, behind us, a working cattle farm. And there's not a lot of those left in Western Mass. They're kind of going the way of the dinosaur. All working farms are. But here in Granville and Southwick, there are still a few dairy farms and cattle farms. And that's going to provide us with a natural field, right? Well, a field that's going to be kept up. And uh, he's out there with his clipboard. Here's another one of those poison ivy arbors. Seems like everywhere you look, you got poison ivy almost appearing to be cultivated. Just going for a walk can be hazardous. Field and forest. Today, much like it was 400 years ago here, because people continue to farm. And they do over much of the country. But as the East Coast is suburbanized and the suburban mentality gets into people that end up buying land, they'll end up with a field that they'll quickly allow to go fallow and become a thicket. I've seen it dozens and dozens of times in dozens and dozens of places here in western Massachusetts. So when you're doing a bird count, all bets are off. That's true. You just go where you will and you do what you want. But you do stop and take note of a very pretty sunset here in Granville under the slopes of Sodom Mountain. Little brook. It's got to be good for birds. It's good for bugs. Catbird. Oh, there's a catbird in there. It's called a catbird because they make that meow. Like, <coughs> yeah, I heard <coughs> that before. Oh, that guy's making a racket. You want to see him? I could probably get him up. He's going to get him up. He's pishing. He doesn't care. There he is. Yeah, he's... <laughs> he came right up. Songs by old popped up. Say you're a landowner and you're like just out doing the mowing. Oh, you know? <laughs> and you're doing the mowing, your mower breaks down down the street, you're walking home and you got this guy and he's just on his hands and knees, he's making this racket. He's got a clipboard. You're like, you're like, uh, call the funny phone. This is why we have police officers. Yeah, yeah. There's a bird right there in there. Yeah, it's probably the catbird. Yeah, that is the catbird. I know what they look like. The gray, the gray guy right there. Yeah. He didn't come out. He's still right there. I can see him moving around in there. They're all gray. They got a black, they're charcoal 
charcoal gray top. And the weird thing is, they've got a, a chestnut red under them where their butt is, or their, what's cloaca is called. You don't see it unless you get an underview of them. But why red there? Who knows? Oh, oh indigo bunting. Indigo bunting, where? Down here, Colin. Oh, we got an indigo bunting sighting. Or, that or, Calls and twos. Chip, 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 cheery, 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 cheery. Indigo buntings are cool. Those, I, I know what they look like. It's right there. You saw it? No, I'm hearing it. He's hearing it. Look at him. Pepper, right? Cheery, cheery, yeah. It always comes cool. in Yeah, I hope it comes out on film. Cheery, 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 choo. <laughs> cheery, 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 choo. Oh, just the... Oh, the indigo bunting has flown. But, uh, 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 oh, no, there is. No, you yeah. haven't. Got a great elderberry right here. Getting ready to flower. Oh, Cherry, 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 whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Look at the tops of a bush. Top, top of a bush. Top of a to top of a pole. Usually a bush. We're getting close to the indigo bunting. They're everywhere. They're very pretty. It's almost like hunting, right? Really loud. He's excited because he has yeah. heard a sandhill crane. Or two. Two. This is outrageous. It is outrageous. He's never seen one in Massachusetts. They're just not common in New England. Their, their population is increasing. Catbird on our right flying along next to us. Yeah, I counted him. He's upset that you didn't stay, that you were distracted <laughs> by Come this back here, just gonna stop, we're going to listen, we get out, and it, it, this should be... <laughs> He's doubting himself now. But he thinks it was chickens now. Listen, I'll play them. It's not going to be a big deal because it's not going to it's not going to be crazy. There's a sandhill crane. And they're really, really, really loud. If you want to see a great thing, if you want to see a spectacular thing, and I mean spectacular, nature-wise, go to the Platte River in Nebraska in April, because almost all of our sandal cranes use it as a staging ground. They come up from Texas and Louisiana in that area, where they overwinter, and for about a week or so, two weeks, they stay in the Platte River. You've got 200,000 birds that are four and a half feet tall in a river that's not much wider than this road. And when they take off, you, you, you get there in the morning and it looks like you're looking at a, 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 a boiling river. So we're moving down the road because he's got it in his head that he's gonna ambush some whippoorwills. <laughs> yep, ambushing. A lot of whippoorwills around here. How many species do you have so far? I have 33 right now. 33 species in about an hour. Yeah, a little bit more, but not much. Yeah. Pishing helped. So we're parked in this little neighborhood right here. And we can hear the uh, tree toads. Great tree frogs. Love them. Cool animals. There are only, there are only true tree frog. In the the gray tree. Yeah, spring peepers frog. are pseudo tree frogs, you know, true tree frogs. 
So if you live somewhere and you look outside and you see a Mojave just parked there, <laughs> red, red Mojave, and there's some bald guy in there with a clipboard, you know what he's doing. And binoculars. Yeah, the clipboard binoculars. might not be in his hand. True. And if he's running, it's because he hears Sandhill Crane. Or, sees, or something interesting. <laughs> mm, could be a... And my recommendation is to definitely call the local constabulary. <laughs> definitely. He's up to no good. No, no, no good at all. There, this could be the local PD coming right now. They've already come by once, and I missed it. A long time ago, one of them was called the Goat Sucker. The Whippoorwill is in the Goat Sucker family, he <laughs> just said. A bird family known as the Goat Suckers. They, they, I believe, I'm not positive, but I believe they used, they used to think that they would um, suck on goat's blood. A long time ago. Unbelievable. Or maybe it was goat's milk. I don't know. But they, you'd, you'd find them like in the fields and stuff. And people would say, we're... <laughs> They're sucking up. Because the goat didn't produce as much milk as it had yep. been probably. And they said, oh, it's sucking the goat's maybe, milk. Maybe. I'm not sure. But there's the poor will and the whipper will and the, the common nighthawk and the parakeet and all these different... All throughout the whole country, there's lots of different ones. And they're really, really camouflaged. Yeah, they are. So you, you'll like you'll you'll never come across them. Like you, you see them on the ground because they're ground nesters. You 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 consider yourself very, very, very lucky. So if you're from Vermont and you're looking to make a pie, think of a different bird to use. <laughs>